Good pause YouTube. How's it going everybody? Have for y'all today a pretty good RU battle that I had a couple of days ago with the Altario team. And if you guys missed the showdown live I did with that team, I'll leave a link to that somewhere in the video so you guys can go check that out then come back to this video. Now, this battle was taken and edited before I got the Wi-Fi battle backgrounds from Vizion, so I'm using the normal animated background that I really like. And I actually just got back from work, which is why I probably sound tired. Luckily though, I have the next two days off of work. So I can hopefully try to stack up content for you guys so I can kind of upload daily for a bit. But yeah, just because now I've been uploading like every other day or at least trying to because of college and work and all that yada yada. Anyways, my opponent's team actually looks pretty threatening. Uh, Sigalith is easily the biggest threat that I have to watch out for. Uh, Smeargle is going to be a pain getting up hazards and then Sandslash can break Spiritomb so if Smeargle does get up rocks along with spikes I have to find some way to get rid of Spiritomb so I can rapid spin away the hazards then if Sigalith is costing power or calm mine and I allow it to set up and I lose my Rotom cut which has trick for Sigalith then that thing is going to sweep me then Hariyama could definitely become a big problem if I lose my Sloking so I really have to watch out for that but yeah with that let's get this started so seeing that he doesn't have a ground type, I'm going to be leading off with my Rotom Mo. As he ends up leading off with Smeargle, right off the bat, I'm going to go for the Volt Switch because 10 times out of 10, Smeargle will always go straight for Spore. So I Volt Switch into my Entei, which has Sleep Talk, and I'm going to take this opportunity to go for the Sleep Talk because Entei is faster than Smeargle, and I guess he predicts this, and he switches into the Kabutops as I still get off a good amount of damage with the 4 times resisted Flare Blitz, which just goes to show you how powerful Entei is with the Choice Band and Adam in Nature. So predicting him to go for a Sword Dance or a Waterfall, I end up switching directly into my Rotom as he does go for the Waterfall. He's actually going to leave in his Kabutops for fodder which I found to be very odd but then again the only real reason he needed Kabutops is to keep my Entei in check and with it being put to sleep I guess he thought that he didn't really need it. So this way he will be able to get Switch Initiative as I bring in my Excavalier he does end up bringing in the Smeargle which I guess was a dumb play on my part. But getting rid of Smeargle is really good for me because now I prevent him from getting up any possible layers of spikes. As he brings in the uh, Sigalith, I'm going to predict him to go for the cost of power so I switch directly into my Rotom. But no, he surprises me with the Air Slash which automatically tells me he is an offensive variant of Sigalith. Which means it's not as big of a threat as it could be but it's still going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. As I bring in my Atari, I end up going for the Roost as he brings in the Hariyama. I'm going to switch directly into my Sand Slash knowing that I can take any hit that he wants to go for as he makes a good double switch into the Rotom mode predicting me to more than likely bring in Sl uh, Sloking just because Sloking can deal with Hariyama one on one. Then this turn I'm predicting him to predict me to stay and predict him to Volt Switch and I'm going to predict him to Leaf Storm and I bring him Altaria which is exactly what happens and then this turn I'm going to go for the Draco Meteor knowing that I will get off a huge hit on whatever he decides to bring in as he brings in the Hariyama it turns out that he's more of a bulky variant considering the fact that he has leftovers and unfortunately I end up missing my second Draco Meteor which means I don't feel comfortable bringing in my Entei to go for the Sleep Talk because I knew that after that bit of Draco meter damage I would be able to bring an Entei and even if I pulled Flare Blitz and him having Thick Fat I would still be able to knock him out. Although this way I am able to bring in Sand Slash and I know that the switch in the Spirit Tomb is way too obvious so I predict him to stay in and I go for the Rapid Spin anyways as he gets off a good amount of damage with the Ice Punch and then I am then going to just go straight for the Earthquake because I know he more than likely is going to now bring in Spirit Tomb because Sand Slash can literally not do anything to Spirit Tomb. So by keeping Hazards off of my side of the field my team will no longer have to take any unnecessary damage and I predict him to go for the will wisp but it turns out that he's actually a Calm Mind variant of Spirit Tomb which means if I lose my Excavalier, Spirit Tomb is going to be able to just plow through my team. So I bring an Entei, I sleep talk the Extreme Sea, but it's fine because it's 50-50. So this turn I'm hoping I get the Flare Blitz, but no, I get Extreme Speed again. <laughs> and it's okay, it's okay, because third time is a charm. I'm going to go for the sleep talk, and of course I wake up. <laughs> Why Entei? So, so unlucky. And he knocks me out with another Dark Pulse. Unfortunately though, even though my Excavalier is Adamant Max Attack Choice Banded, it still cannot Oko Spirit Tomb that is Max Defense Max HP. Although I get off a huge amount of damage, I know that nothing on this team is going to safely switch into my Excavalier, so I'm just going to go straight for the Mega Horn again as I clean knock out this Hariyama. Ladies and gentlemen, that is resisted and it just died. 
And it was more of a bulky variant, obviously, because he had leftovers. But thanks to the help from Atari, I was able to get rid of Hariyama. As he brings in the Sigalith, I know my Slow King will literally be able to take any move that he wants to go for. So I end up switching directly into that. As he ends up going for the Heat Wave, I am then going to predict him to switch into Rotom. And I'm going to go for the Thunder Wave. But he actually brings in the Spirit Tomb. So this turn, hoping that Skull will take him out, I go for it. Unfortunately, though, Spirit Tomb literally lives on 1%. And he ends up going for the rest, which really isn't a big deal because now this allows me to get a free switch into my Excavalier to go straight for the Megahorn. But he actually double switches into the Rotom, probably predicting me to go for another Scald. And I make a very risky play by staying in because I know some Rotoms do like to carry Hidden Power of Fire. Luckily for me, he didn't have it. I clean knock out Rotom as he brings back in the Sigilyph. I need to keep my Excavalier because Excavalier is literally the only thing I have left that can knock out that Spirit Tomb. So I switch directly into my Slow King. As he gets a crit, it doesn't really end up mattering whatsoever. Although I am going to be forced to go for the Slack Off this turn where I would have gone for the Thunder Wave instead of Slack Off. But then again, he probably still would have switched directly into Spirit Tomb if he didn't crit me, predicting me to Thunder Wave. So yeah, in the end, the crit honestly does not matter whatsoever. As he does bring in the Spirit Tomb, I'm going to switch directly into my Excavalier knowing that if he does pull the Dark Pulse, he won't be able to knock me out. And of course, he does get the Dark Pulse. Luckily though, this Excavalier runs enough speed EVs to outspeed non-invested Spirit Tomb. And I'm going to be able to clean knock him out with a Swarm Boosted Stabbed Choice Banded Adamant Mega Horn. As he brings in the Sigilyph, I make a very stupid play and I leave you my Excavalier. What I should have done was switch directly into my Slow King. Gone for the Thunder Wave, then fought it off my Sand Slash. That way my Excavalier would have been faster than the Sigilyph. But yeah, I just have to make this a whole lot more difficult for me. Luckily though, he doesn't have Calm Mind. And eventually, Slow King will be able to beat Sigilyph one-on-one. -on -one just because, as you can see, Scald is a 3 KO. And with him being paralyzed, he can't flinch me to death. And if he does crit me, I will be faster than him, allowing me to slack off before he gets up more prior damage. So he ends up realizing that he's fighting a losing battle and he's going to end up running. And that's going to be the 2 of victory in my favor. So if you guys like the layout, enjoy the battle, enjoy the narration. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to some more content. And with that, I'm out of here. I will hopefully be seeing you guys soon. And I need to go take a shower because I haven't done that yet. So yeah, later everybody.